All right, what's going on? It's Bobby Skinner talking Giants with your week six Giants film review and their loss to the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday Night Football. Unfortunately, an L. Um, so there's going to be some ugly film that we're going to go through. We're going to talk through some things because Sunday Night Football does a good job of replay. There's some takes out there. There's some screenshot warriors. We're going to break it down. Are they right about a lot of this stuff? So we're going to get into it. Daniel Jones struggles. The defense played really well. We're going to talk about how it's, it's pretty simple, even though you see this big run by Joe Burrow. So let's get into all of it. My favorite video to make every single week. So like and subscribe so I can continue to do it. All right, first play. We're starting on the defensive side of the football, and um, they're going to get this sack for Brian Burns, right? Turns it into third and long. And this is pretty much what the Giants ran all night, which was man coverage with help to the Jamar Chase side. You know, now they actually have banks on Chase on this play. You know, they had flawed on him the majority of the game. But, I mean, let's look at him. We're man coverage, man, man, um, man on the back, and then the two deep safeties, right? So we're in two man. So we're over here over the top, running a smash concept, but you get that versus man. I mean, hey, he could make this quick throw, but you're going to see this is where pass rush wins. The pass rush of Brian Burns makes this a win for the New York Giants. We're not doing anything special on the back end of this, right? We got we got Drew Phillips manned up here. They switch release, so you know they switch their coverages, but we are still in man coverage. And it's just Brian Burns making a play. I mean that's just a simple outside and win, and that, and that that's what that you know ability the freestyle gives you. One, two, three. We're pushing off that third step. We're challenging upfield. We get him working outside. We time up the punch. With the punch, we swipe. And we're here. We're here. All right, we're forcing Joe Burrow to pump, to hold on to that thing. You get a sack. You turn it into third and long. I mean, that's just a nice that's just a nice win for for Brian Burns. You know, his third sack of the season, and to me, uh, his his best sack of the season. Even though he did get a strip sack on Watson. Next play, this is the long Joe Burrow touchdown. This is the negative side of just you know getting after the rusher, losing your lane, or not having every lane taken care of, and playing man coverage. This time, they're gonna run one robber, and they're gonna. They're going to rush five, right? So it's a cover one blitz. Newbin's going to be manned up on the tight end down here. So we're in man coverage, and they run everybody to the left, right? All of their routes go to the left, right? You have Pinnock as the middle field safety. We're third and long. Man, man, man. Newbin is crashing down here to pick up this tight end. You know, maybe you can, because the tight end's on a block and release and it's so long, you have Newbin sit at the sticks essentially. But you don't want to let them get into field goal range with a good kicker and McPherson, you know. So you don't want their outlets to be open. But we're we're man coverage, and we're I mean we're in good coverage everywhere, right? They could throw us a, a stop to Higgins down here, but this is good. This is a good job. Now because they are running four, you know, four to one side, basically five to one side. Pinnock is seeing the route combination, and he's moving towards that. He takes his eye off the quarterback because they're playing Joe Burrow. Takes his eye off the quarterback. Burrow sees that and he's gone, right? And he's not a very athletic quarterback. And yet he's having the longest rush of his career for a touchdown. And this is the issues with some of these alignments where you're trying to get Dexter Lawrence a one-on-one. Right, so you, you do a good job of getting Dexter Lawrence the one-on-one. -on -one, but you know if they double-team help here, well, you can loop around here and get the free rusher. But they do a good job of picking this up. Because the right, the right guard doesn't go full-on help Dexter uh, against Dexter Lawrence. All right, so you're, you're basically just trying to create one-on-ones. Right? One, 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 one. You know, you got the tight end help here. 
But Chapman's not able to get around here by the time Burrow's gone. And Aziz isn't able to make the play. And he's just getting himself an easy touchdown. That's unfortunate. All right, back uh, on offense. Cool new, uh, you know, design out of a similar concept. So you're going to see Wandale catch the ball out of the backfield. That's cool and all. We'll get into it. So if you've ever watched these film reviews, which if you're watching one after a loss, you probably have watched ones after wins, we talk about the shock concept, right? we got three to one side. We'll have the running back run a hitch, uh, the slot run a fade, and then he, this route will be a choice, right? Where it's, you know, it's you work up to here. If these linebackers play like this, you sit. If you got one-on-one, -on -one, you, you pick a side, essentially, based off of that player's leverage. So... The Giants run it, though, with the number three now, with Jalen Hyatt as the vertical, and Darius Slayton has the choice. Right? So you're going to see Darius Slayton has the choice. He's going to run this return route, and it's open. But the Giants run the number three as the vertical. Now, if you guys watch Hard Knocks with talking with Caleb Williams, this is the way Caleb Williams likes to run this play. It's not the way that most guys do, but most teams don't run the number three as a vertical because if you're ever going to throw this, you got to fire it in there. And I'm sorry, but they're never planning on Daniel Jones throwing the vertical on this. So the vertical is essentially just a clear space. You know, Brian Dable talked about like Caleb liking it, Brett Favre liking it, but you got to fire it in there. And you wouldn't throw it against this coverage anyways, for the most part. But nonetheless, that's what, you know, the number three is the vertical on this. It's just to create space in here, in the middle. And what Jones is going to read on this is this linebacker. Because on the back side of this, we've got Theo basically clearing out. And then you give Wandale the choice route out of the backfield. So, uh, DJ's read is this linebacker. So, this linebacker plays to this side, right? So, that's, you know, because they're used to this, the choice being on this, on this player, the number three or, or here. All right, so the linebacker plays to the right. So they want to be here for Darius Slayton. So they have these players in the area. And it's versus a three deep zone. Well, guess what? When the linebacker moves over there, we've got all this space in the middle of the field. And he's wide open. Wide open. I think that was their longest passing play of the day. That was their... Actually, not longest passing play. That was their longest play of the day. So, but just a cool new uh, wrinkle to a Giants familiar concept. Here's the interception on the throwback to Theo Johnson. Now, DJ's trying to throw the ball out of the back of the end zone. So we don't need to break that down like crazy. And I want to explain the thinking on this. The Giants, I'm pretty confident, thought that they were going to get a three deep zone. Right? Cover three. But in reality... They get a four deep, right? So he's they're expecting this safety to roll down and then the play cover three. And so what they're hoping is that when you play cover three and you get play action like this, right? Play action, the boot, and then you have this receiver run the cross. This corner will turn in the man coverage and follow on that because you don't really have a threat out here. So they're hoping that this corner follows Jalen Hyatt on that. And then there would be one deep safety instead of the two right here. And then you have the other deep player, which is this corner back here. Uh, so they're expecting one deep safety, this safety to flow with the play. See Theo Johnson working vertically and then hoping he'd pop back out and be open. But post snap, they pop back into, you know, essentially a, a, red, a red zone quarters. And so you can look at this and like, oh man, throw the ball to Tyrone Tracy. But the plan was never to throw the ball to Tyrone Tracy. It's try to get the Theo. The thing is, you can't you just can't get hit on this throw. Like it's it's as simple as that. You cannot get hit on this throw as you throw it out of bounds. And you do like I don't know what you know, and I didn't get the other view, but you know, Illuminor gets beat by BJ Hill. Can't have that, but you can't have a bad turn into a disaster. So you got to either take the sack, scramble, and then throw away. But what you can't do 
is get hit while you throw, have the ball pop up, and give away points. That's what you can't have happen. And that's exactly what happened there. And that's that's when you that's taking a bad play uh, and making it worse. And Daniel Jones doing that. Next play on offense. I want to go through this just to show the the Bengals. And maybe I should have put a play in there. But the Bengals were running a lot of fire zone on early downs, especially versus empty against the Giants, which is base, which is just lining everybody up on the line of scrimmage. Is that you know cover zero looks and then backing out? It's hard to pass against. It really is. But the way the Giants combated that was this, and the Bengals stopped, essentially stopped doing it um, after this play. Was just they ran QB power. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna put all these guys on the line of scrimmage and have you know linebackers and D linemen backing out, right? Like this play, if it was a pass, BJ Hill's dropping back in the coverage. This linebacker's dropping back in the coverage. So the Giants, I'm pretty sure they did this just a cut, ran this a couple times to get them out of this look. So you have GV, Greg Van Roten down block, uh, Illuminor base block, base block, pull Runyon, and you get a nice chunk run. I'm like, okay, stop running those cover zero looks at us. Stop running those fire zones at us on first and second down, or we'll just do that to you. We'll just we'll just run the ball on you like that. And teams aren't really built to do that consistently unless you're the Minnesota Vikings. All right, next play on offense. What do we have here? Oh, this is the miss the Wandale. This is a concept that Brian Dable loves. The Giants kind of got rid of it from their playbook for two a year and a half. Brought it back into their playbook with Tyrod Taylor at the end of last year. And the Giants have been trying to hit it this year, and they just haven't been able to hit it. Whether it's DJ not taking the more aggressive throw on these plays, but this is called wave. And you're going to have Jalen Hyatt run a post. And you try and run it versus cover three. And then these two players are basically running digs. You know, basic in routes. You would like them to be a little closer in this. But you're trying to attack this area. Right? All this grass over here. They are in cover three. Right? You got the deep safety. We've got, we're matching here. Over here. And then... This corner, again, we talked about it. The corner chase is on this. Peels back off onto this, onto Wandale. But you're looking to attack this area, and that's exactly what the Giants get. Right? A nice chunk play. And we just flat out miss. I don't want to hear about Wandale Robinson's, you know, catch radius on this either. We just flat out miss. We've got time. I understand that JMS gets beat eventually by BJ Hill. This is a throw we should be making. And we miss it. That's a chunk play taken off the board by a flat out miss. When you can keep it as simple as that. Next play on defense. Some really good. The, the Bengals didn't want to run the ball. Some really good run defense. Um, by guys stepping up in, in this game. So first you're going to see this. And we've pointed this out. Whenever a team gets in a heavy formation, and then they put the tight end as a fullback, the Giants will have their one of their edges pop out to stack linebacker, and they'll get in a 4-3. They'll get in a 4-3 over front. That's just what they do. Like they do with Brian Burns. That's, that's what they do. I'd love to hear Bowen explain a little more why they're doing that, but I guess just making it a little harder for them for the, pic, the picture post pre-snap to get a read on where guys are going to be. So they run toss. And, I mean, it starts with setting a great edge. This is that guy's name is Patrick Johnson. Most of you guys don't know who he is because you're not a freak like me. Um, who, like, you know, checks every transaction the Giants make. This is They claim this guy is a special teamer from the Eagles. Watch him on this play. I mean, we, we bring it. We get in this tight end's chest. We keep our feet driving. He's ruined the play. He has ruined the play on this. They also just don't block it well. This tackle should be down blocking. But what they're expecting, and this is a great run blitz by Shane Bowen. Right? You have Micah McFadden here. So what these two guys are thinking is combo to 41. Combo to 41. Well, they run blitz. And 
And both these guys, like 75 wants to get out here to Mikey McFadden. This guard is a little slow of a stance, sees this on the backside. They don't trust each other, right? This is bad. This is a bad rushing offense, honestly. Um, they don't trust each other. And because of that, they leave DJ Davison unblocked. Mike McFadden has a good run blitz. He powers through there. And we're, we're awesome. We've set the edge. We have a unblocked player. We have Mike McFadden uh, busting it up on the backside of this. And we get ourselves our DBs, right? Our DBs, Phil, Phil, get aggressive, right? Don't play hesitant. Tyler Newbin, get aggressive. Cordell Flock, get aggressive. And we get ourselves a tackle for a loss. That's team run defense right there. It's team run defense. Next play on defense. Third and four. This is going to be an Aziz sack on a stunt. Again, this is why like these defensive plays, they're nothing crazy. Like This is just your basic cover one robber. And then a stunt. Like, this is what they... They ran man coverage and they stunted up front. So, third and four. They motion chase. They see they got man coverage. And the Giants have Newbin as the robber. Right? So, take away some of these inbreakers. Right? Or just Burrow's not as confident in these inbreakers because of Newbin. Right? But we're, we're man coverage. We have the deep safety. Burrow doesn't want to throw it because of Tyler Newbin's presence here. And then Aziz wins on a stunt. I mean, it's simple. This is not a crazy breakdown, right? A lot of times on these great defensive performances with Patrick Graham or Wink Martindale, I'm like, man, look at how they confuse them. They didn't confuse anything. They just ran a stunt. I guess they confused these guys up front. So the Bengals are going to set their protection to Dexter Lawrence, right? The center checks with the linebacker here in Okereke. He goes back and helps Dexter Lawrence. So you got three for two here. And Chapman, man, he like this is where his quickness helps. He gets up field. He wins, right? He wins on this swim. That pulls this guard out here, and that allows Aziz to loop back inside. And this presence of Nubin is here, and we got a sack for Aziz Ojolari. That's what ha has having a quick, penetrating defensive line. Like, you know, you watch Hard Knocks, Shane Bone. We want penetrators, right? We want penetrators. That allows that. You got DJ Davidson out here. He's not penetrating on this. And Aziz Ojolari gets to get himself a nice sack. How about that? On third down. Big play. Next play. Fourth down and one for the Giants. This is a great wrap-up of the way that teams play the New York Giants. One, they know they want to throw quick routes. This is fourth down and one, not third down and short, but same thing. They know they want to throw quick routes to Wanda Robinson. Choice routes, sit, you know, hitches, all that, all that good stuff. The, the teams know. They know that. And they know DJ wants to, like, the DJ wants to force that. And this is frustrating. So... It's just bad post-snap processing. And I know that's become like a phrase that people just talk about. But it's true. Like, we get a blitz, right? We're not expecting blitz out of this. We have this safety uh, rolled deep. And these linebackers blitz. Right? So when this linebacker blitzes, we should be like, all right, we got numbers. We've got numbers. And the Giants are running essentially a spot. So you're going to have Darius Slayton out in the flat. Wandale Robinson on this this hitch right here and then Theo Johnson on the scene and you just have to you have to make this defender declare right what you could do is when you see this blitz and you see 29's uh, hips turn you could the quick easy throw the decision would be throw the ball to Darius Slayton here throw the ball to Darius Slayton the other thing you would need to do is if you're not going to throw this ball to Darius Slayton here one, you could, you know, have the ball out now, right? Just having the ball out now, that makes a throw. But you don't make have to make it that difficult on yourself. You need this defender to declare. And instead, we are throwing the ball while he's driving down. Make him cover Theo Johnson. But this is the lack of respect that teams have because they know. They want to get the ball out quick. He wants to get the ball out quick. Especially on these money downs, they're not going to sit, hang in there and try and make a play. 
This is disrespect for this player. It's not disrespect for Wanda Robinson or Darius Slayton or Theo Johnson. It's disrespect for this player. Is we don't we don't think you're gonna do it. So we're willing to blitz. We want to force you to get that ball out hot, even though the Giants protect this well. We want to. F- like I, I don't I don't think we're throwing wanting to throw this ball to Theo Johnson, but make him cover it. Right, and I know there's going to be a lot. There's a lot of screenshot warriors who will pause it right here and be like, "He threw it to the only guy that's not open." This is not like the easiest throw, but if you see this player commit, like make him turn his hips, make him open up his hips and cover this. Instead, he just gets to stay on his toes and make a play. That sucks. I mean, we'll see it from this angle. All right, it looks like he's going to cover Theo Johnson. So it's a decent disguise, but it's just the team's like the reason why they're disguising it like that is because they know he wants to throw that quick ball to Wanda Robinson. So the Giants have to change whether it's getting more aggressive on some of these, uh, you know, third and shorts, uh, getting uh, you know the tight ends a little more involved on these third downs. But it's people know you want to throw choice routes to Wanda Robinson on these downs. It's as simple as that. All right, next play um, on defense here. This is again just really good job playing run defense by by different players. I and mean, watch Drew Phillips on this. It's as simple as that. They run power. So one is a good job by Dexter Lawrence, right? They're trying to double to McFadden on this. Dexter Lawrence is able to stay on it. Make the play. But Here's a Drew Phillips. Get downhill and fit. We lever outside. We get low. And we flip. We flip a 355 pound man over us. And we keep our feet above us. And we force him inside. And Dexter Lawrence squeezing this doesn't allow him. Like, even if Drew Phillips does this and Dexter Lawrence, excuse me for all that rewinding. And Dexter Lawrence just stays right here, which is where most defensive tackles would. Just stays right here. They they have a big run. But Dexter Lawrence and Drew Phillips doing a damn good job. Makes a play for the New York Giants on their run defense. A chill is in the air. Leaves falling to the ground. And football every weekend. You can now make each weekend more exciting by getting into the action with our partners at DraftKings. That's the number one place to bet on touchdowns. Right now, all new customers who bet just $5 will instantly get $200 in bonus bets when you use code WORLD. That's $200 in bonus bets instantly. Stay in on the action and use your $200 in bonus bets to bet anytime touchdowns on DraftKings. DraftKings is the place to bet touchdowns. It's the place. And say, where do you bet touchdowns, Bobby? DraftKings. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code WORLD and bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code WORLD only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Get on um, on some baseball too, right? This is this is what this mustache is for. Baseball. And you'll be glad you did. Another thing the Bengals are doing, we're sh- having their nickel corner cheat in the run or show blitz all game. And I was asking them for, the, for them to do this the entire first half. I'm glad they finally did it, which is just, if he's going to do this, throw the smoke, throw the smoke. And that's exactly what they do. Wandale's able to get nine yards out of it, and they stopped doing it as much. They did a little bit, but they were doing this all game long, and it messes with, it messes with your run game. So throw it. Bam, easy gain. Good stuff. All right, next play. Watch Jalen Hyatt. This is an RPO. Jones pulls this. He wants to throw the ball to Jalen Hyatt. I can't live with that. This is a target for Jalen Hyatt. We can't do anything with our release. 
right? We get his hips open a little bit, right? Take your right hand now. You swat it off of you. Take your right hand. Swat this arm off of you and get get in this window. Instead, we just put two hands on him and just hope that the QB is not looking our way and quit on it. And I could do I could go through Jalen Hyatt play after Jalen Hyatt play, right? Of bad releases and stuff like that. But this is just that's like that's unacceptable. You can't ask. You can't ask, like again. I, as long as Jalen Hyatt plays, find me some screenshots of him open on the back side of stuff. I don't care. How are we ever supposed to get off of the front side of our reads and look at this? Like we just wasted a play. Second and four, we just wasted a play. And again, this is this is who he's looking for, right? All right, we have this linebacker in this window. That's the window that's there. So we want to talk about opportunities and shit. Next time, just throw the free release to slate you. That's as simple as that. Just throw the free release. Hand it off or throw the free release. Because I'm not looking your way ever again after after stuff like that. I'm never looking your way on the backside of an RPO. Anyways, next play. What do we got here? Again, okay, another RPO. And you've got this one-on-one with Slayton here. Safety shaded to the to the strength. And just let Slayton go out there and win. He does. And this is part of, you know, taking shots as you get a pass interference even with a bad ball. Because this is a bad ball. But Slayton does a good job, right? We're in, we're in good position. We're about as good a position as we can get without just totally smoking number 20. And that ball's inside and behind us. We go and try to make a play on it. The corner, because he's beat, plays the receiver's hands. You get a pass interference. Giants pounded in for a one-yard touchdown next play. Awesome. Awesome stuff. All right, next play. Um, on defense again, this is this is third and goal. This is what I was talking about. There is nothing crazy about the Shane Bone defense besides just like stunning the pass rush and playing man coverage against uh, Joe Burrow. Like, let's look at this. We're just running two man, All right? Man, 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 and then you got the two safeties. Like, if you ever played. You know, Madden, it's cover two man. It's like the most basic defense in the game. So it's just about guys winning. And you got Adore, who's funneling in, into this safety. So we've got a double team on Jamar Chase. Banks does a really good job on T. Higgins here. Right? We don't get caught up in this, in this right here. Drew Phillips does a decent enough job on Yashovis. You got Simmons on Gasecki. And you're going to see on the other side, the pass rush just gets there, right? Aziz Ojolari helps create a sack for Dexter Lawrence. Brian Burns gets around the corner. Simple as that. Like, let's watch Aziz. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Right? You've lost at this point, right? He's pushing his weight outside. Redirect inside. Push him off of you. Right? He wants to push his weight out there. Okay, push him off of you. That's a big grown ass man. Talking about how strong he is. Top 20 draft pick. Push him off of you. Redirect. And and create and you know, instead of Dexter Lawrence creating other guy's sacks, this time we're gonna create a sack for him. Right? Burns, keep fighting. Chapman. Push, push this guard back. Give him nowhere to go. And now Dexter Lawrence gets a sack. They're forced to kick a field goal. Right? Now they have 10 points in the fourth quarter. So tell, tell me the crazy look on that from the defense. Nothing. But guys just went out there and did their job. You doubled the number one wide receiver. Like that was the game plan. It was as simple as that. All right. Next play. This is, um, 
What are we looking at here? Oh, this is the second and one QB sneak. I want to talk through this. So they QB sneak on second and one. And honestly, in the moment of the game, the offense was so bad that I was like, I'll just take the first down. But looking at it and thinking about it, like I, you can't operate like this as an offensive play caller. Second and one is your time to take a chance, especially when you know that you're going for it and it's, it's four down territory for you. You've got two plays to get one yard. If you don't, if you don't, uh, if you don't, if you aren't successful in second one, so you have two plays to either run a QB sneak or hand the ball off to Tyrone Tracy. Look at this this look, right? Look at where these guys are pre snap. They are begging you to go down the field, and I understand Daniel Jones has been completely inaccurate on these, right? Completely inaccurate. But guess what? You can do right. You can challenge vertically, run a curl, run a curl route. Right, do something like that, you know, play action it, or just take the shot and know, hey, it's not a, not a guarantee or high success rate for the team this year, but that can lead to winning. Maybe you draw pass interference like we just saw before. This is the moment to do that because there's really no risk because then you have two plays to get one yard. And if you can't trust, you know, yourself to have two plays to get one yard, then I like. You're in a really bad spot offensively, and I know the overreactionary tar- uh, point of this because this is very ne- this is a very negative film review when it comes to the quarterback position and Daniel Jones. It's like, well, he can't hit the ball deep. That's bullshit. Then bench him. Like, then bench him. If you are if you are are QB sneaking on second and one, if you feel the need that oh my quarterback cannot hit anything down the field. So that's why I need the QB sneak on second and one. If that's your thought process, that's garbage thought process, but bench the quarterback then. Because then what are we even doing? You know, and as much as Daniel Jones has been inaccurate this year, he is still an NFL quarterback. He has hit, you know, not a very high rate, but he has hit deep passes this year. You have Jalen Hyatt, who's a deep threat. You have Darius Slayton, who's a deep threat. Throw it. Or, hey, Hand the ball off, right? Second and one, just a regular handoff. Maybe you get a big explosive play in the run game. But when you QB sneak, you're limiting yourself to three yards. You're limiting yourself to a three-yard gain in a game where you are struggling for points. Do anything but a QB sneak. Like, drop back and just throw the ball out of the back of the end zone just so they're like they're paying attention to you. Anything but a QB sneak. There's no good argument for it. Any argument to me is bad. I've seen them. I posted it. I've seen the, I've seen every response. I think every single one is bad. Every single one is bad. Next play. Third and five. And this is... So we're going to force the ball to Wandale Robinson right here. And this is what's so frustrating, man. Is I don't know if the Giants would be able to convert on this third and five. Right? Like I could... I could pause and be like, look, Theo Johnson, right? But where is he in the progression? Is he second, third, fourth, right? Uh, does this safety close in on that, right? Does I'm not guaranteeing that this is a conversion if he does this. I'm not going to screenshot, you know, be a, a, you know, a screen grab warrior. But we get so locked on, right? I like the matchup here, right? Third and five, I can dig this matchup. But he's get he he's covered. He gets pressed up. He's stumbling, and we, and we just throw it. I understand this is timing and all that stuff, and you got to trust it. But I just, we are stuck. Right? Again, you have pressure. You want to get the ball out quick. I understand it. I'm not. I'm not sitting here saying if he doesn't throw here, it's a first down. But we get so stuck on this, man. That's a five foot eight wide receiver with literally the shortest arms ever measured in combine history. We need to see him get a little more win here than this to force this in here. I understand this is some, this is a bit of Monday morning quarterbacking, but you can't you can't have that. And then the ball ends up getting tipped anyways. Um, not tipped. He throws it right off of BJ Hill's head. So, you know. Doesn't even get the receiver that way. But I'm not mad at him for that. I'm mad at him just like, well, we, can't, we can't force it there. I'm sorry. You cannot force it there. Back on defense. Again, third and 10. What are the Giants going to run? They're going to run man coverage. Two deep safeties. And then they're going to stunt. It's as simple as that. 
right? You see, we are man, 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 man coverage, man coverage with the running back. Right? They're going to run this out here. But by this time, the sack is there. I mean, we got good coverage here. We know that they can't have an inbreaker because of this safety. Right? We funneled this player into this safety. Third and ten. And Brian Burns wins on us on a stunt. Like, it's as simple as that. Like, play decent enough man coverage, funnel it to the safeties, and win as a rusher. Right? Elijah Chapman does a great job setting this up, right? Great job setting it up. If there's one thing Elijah Chapman's been good, has been setting up stunts and finishing them. Penetrate, get upfield, get into this player's chest. You know the protection is going to check Okereke and set to uh, Lawrence. So you're not going to have the center helping over here. Most likely not. And if you do, you just have Dex one-on-one -on -one essentially. And then Burns loop around. He's got the speed. Bam. Put a hit on him. Force the ball out. They got a punt. They got a punt. That's awesome stuff. So the Giants get the ball back. It's still 10 to 7. They got a chance. But now they have 4th and 2 on the Bengals 36. And we're going to motion Wandell Robinson. And we're going to run what's called a trail concept. And it sounds like it. The trailing receiver. It's meant to get the trailing receiver open. And we. The one time we should throw the ball to Wandale here. We don't. So what we're running here is. You're going to have Darius Slayton. On the drive route. Right, right here. And I understand that. Not the worst spot in the world, but you can see that this corner clears all this traffic and is driving on it. He is driving on it. And we force it here. But here's the thing. This is not this is not a one read and go type of play. This is not like this is not really designed to go to Slayton unless this corner gets caught up in the traffic, like it happened versus the commanders with Malik Neighbors. What we're really trying to set up here. Is we're trying to pull this defender in man. And we get the motion identifier that we're in man coverage. All right. So we know we we think we got man coverage. We have to see post snap if we have it. All right. But they blitz. Right. So they blitz onto this. They have no inside presence. So I, I know what DJ's going through DJ's head. We have no inside presence. But we what we do is we have Theo Johnson release vertically. And we stack this, right? We stack this to pull this corner out here. And then, Wandale on the angle, bam. And he's open. And he's open. I understand there is pressure. There is pressure. But this is here. This is this is the design. This goes exactly to design, right? This Obviously, if, if this is wide open, you throw here. Obviously. But it's not. It's not. You have a corner that is driving on it, working to get that leverage, and it's not wide open. This is. Like, this is designed for this. There's no Monday morning quarterbacking. That's the design. You, basically, you throw to Slayton if it's wide open. If it's not, you look for Wandale. And it works perfectly. We can slide away from this right here. We can slide away and make this big boy throw to D it's Wandale Robinson. And your game's essentially over at that point. Because now the defense has to go out there and get another stop. And they don't. Because of plays like this. And I'm not going to be mad at the defense. But these are these are the two plays that ended the game. Third and 12. You get them the third and 12. You stop the run. And the Bengals are running dagger. And you're they're running. the defense is running quarters. And the Giants cover it really well. And Burrow makes a play. So, and this is, like, this is a good job by the Giants. Right? Drew sitting at the sticks. You got O'Kara can underneath on the tight end. So this is the clear out. So the safety takes the clear out. Banks seeing that as dagger, right? He sees that. That's the clear out. So he's running the dig route. Turn it in the man. Turn it in the man coverage here, right? Because you know you're vulnerable in this area of the field. Because if they're throwing something backside here, which they are, you're vulnerable. So turn that into man coverage. The issue though is when you turn that into man coverage, because, like, let's say Banks just plays, you know, on paper, on the whiteboard, his zone is right here. And you have Chase wide open. 
Joe Burrow makes that throw. It's a first down. But when you turn your zone into man, you've you've lost your zone. Joe Burrow gets outside the pocket. And this zone is vacated. Drew's got to play the sticks. I understand. You, you, we could we could Monday morning quarterback this and say Drew needs to turn his head and find the play behind him. But after you know Burrow's been you know had a couple of scrambles for a first down and a touchdown, you don't want to do that. But this is this is the problem. This is the negative of stunts. Is you lose this edge, right? Chapman is setting up the stunt. Burns is working inside, and you lose all this, right? We're not going this way. We lose all of this. We allow him out. You can say holding, whatever. I agree, it is holding. But they're able to make that play, and they get the first down, and then the game's essentially over, and they finish it off with this run. Touchdown, Chase Brown. And Giants got the back, st- uh, the box stacked. A good way to run counter, right? Like motion this player in and have him be the kick out. So you have him kick out Burns. Burns tries to sidestep it instead of really levering and squeezing it down. DJ Davidson gets blocked down. I mean, we get pushed, right? We talk about the difference on that Drew Phillips run play. Like between Dexter Lawrence, we get moved from here. We get squeezed down inside the hashes. McFadden feels the correct way that he's supposed to. Okereke could probably do a better job on this, getting to the outside of this. But Newbin's got to get over here. Right? Newbin's, when he sees this, he's got to get into this gap. And he does, but he doesn't get into it fast enough. And you get a touchdown. And the Giants lose to the Cincinnati Bengals. And all panic begins. So, frustrating game. Any loss is frustrating. Right? 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 But it is what it is. We'll, uh, you know, we've cleaned it up. We're gonna on to the Eagles. We need to boost Saquon Barkley. We need to beat the Eagles, right? That's our Super Bowl. You know, if we win this game, you know, Eagles fans are like this is their Super Bowl. Fine, fine. I don't care. This is our Super Bowl. We got to beat Saquon Barkley. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one. Until then, let's go big blue.